Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the brilliant and fantastic Humans of Derby. I'm Sanj, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you again on this Magic Monday. A quick introduction before we get going with our special guest today. Over the last few weeks, you've seen a full repertoire of stuff from our Art of Brilliance team. You've met Dr. Andy Cape originally. Then we've had the wonderful Susie Lavington talking about how to find your brave. And most recently, we had Martin Buda sharing all about how we can be an awesome human being. So I hope the activities are going well. Please feel welcome to carry on emailing this address right now that you can see um, with your activities. But also, if you want to be involved with the project across the community, please email yes at brilliantderby.org. We're getting through the emails and it's a very exciting beh time behind the scenes at Brilliant Derby because most recently we found a lot of really exciting things going on. We've been finding more about uh, what's going on in the community in Derby and we're going to have some really fun sessions planned in the very near future where we're going to be working with real people from Derby soon. Not because the special guest today was not from Derby, always a real person, but we're going to get deeper into the community. We're going to find out what's been going on around the places where you live. So if you want to get involved in terms of being a guest on the show, if you want to get involved in terms of it from an IT perspective or even hosting it, like what I'm doing, please feel welcome to email this address right at the top right now. So it's, it's, it's time for me to, to introduce our special guest today, who is a real Derby man, I promise you. Dr. Andy Cape, are you there, my friend? Uh, I certainly am, Sanj, yes. Uh, and I am a Derby lad, yes, absolutely. And I'm still smarting from our football result at the weekend. It's funny, actually, I've got a PhD in happiness, Sanj, and yet currently being a Rams fan is a tough place to be, mate. Another loss at the weekend. <gasps> However, let's park that. This is about happiness and well-being. So the, uh, the city of Derby is about uh, creating a ripple today. So I want to talk about, uh, I've called it Shine. Can, but uh, so what you got for me, Sanj? What, what do you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, first, we... first I want to know, how are you? It's been a few weeks since we've seen you, Andy. How is lockdown treating you? That's what I want to know. You're looking well, but but how is it really going? Yeah, yeah, how's it really going? It really is going actually quite well, Sanj. And, and you know what? I'm just a little bit concerned about the language that we use. You know, we keep, I, I heard somebody talking the other day on the news about the lost generation of children. Mm. Right? This kind of lost generation, oh, they've missed, they've missed six months of school, they'll never catch up, they're a lost generation. And it worries me as somebody who's been kind of studying well-being for a long time is, is the language we use, mate, the language we use in our head, we always create a story about who we are. And if we keep telling kill them they're the lost generation, they'll start to believe they're the lost generation. And Sanj, I'm not seeing it, right? So when I go for my daily walk, um, I'm seeing families out walking together. I'm seeing kids out walking, getting exercise. I'm, I'm seeing, I saw the other day, I saw a kid climbing a tree. I've not seen a child climbing a tree for 30 years, mate. I've seen kids riding the bikes and walking the dogs and building dens and out in the fresh air and out in nature. So I'm thinking just because they've had a, a little time off school, I don't, they don't stop learning. So maybe they've learned other things. Maybe, Sandy, it's not a lost generation. Maybe it's the found generation. What if they've found family? What if they've found relationships? What if they've found the outdoors and nature? What if they've found what's really, really important to them? So I think we should be changing the language. It, it's, it, oh, you know what I mean? It's the found generation, Sandy. No, it's fantastic. I saw I saw this amazing post on social media. I think it was last week or the week before um, when they were speaking about the school catch up plans. And they were saying that students do need to catch up, but they need to catch up with their friends. They need to catch up with their family. They need to catch up playing outside and all these things which you've just mentioned about spending time outdoors and being a child. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about that, and especially because schools have gone back. You know, it's a fascinating time in the country at the moment, lots of vaccinations, lots of optimism about what's going to happen in the future, but there's still that opportunity to push and guide these children to be stronger and get through this in the right way. Yeah, okay. Well, I want the schools of Derby to be logged onto this today. I'm going to pitch it. It's pitched in adults and children and teenagers and anybody across town. And this is gloves off today, Sands. Bare knuckle fighting today. We're going to go in with the research. Oh, fantastic. Right. I'm off to go and top up my water. Ladies and gents at home, children and, and schools of Derby get excited because this is Dr. Andy Cape at his best. Dr. Andy Cape, over to you. Okay, thanks, Sanj. Okay, I'll do, do a quick shout out of the traditional Derby greeting of A up, me duck. Um, so A up to Allenton and Little Over and Mickle Over and Mac, uh, Macarth and uh, Normanton and Allenton and Chelliston and Spondon and Simfin and Pear Tree and Alistry and Darley Abbey and Chad and Chester Green. 
Welcome. Very, very warm welcome. There's a reason I gave you all a shout out there that I'm going to show in a minute. All right. So we call it Shine today because for me, this is we've been we're trying to introduce Brilliant Derby as a citywide wellbeing program, the world's first ever citywide wellbeing program. Um, but I think we've been skirting around the issues so far. So in, right in episode one, when Sanjay and I had a chat, we talked about launching a revolution. And it's not the kind of revolution that's on the screen next to me there. It's, a, it's the exact opposite of that revolution. All right. So there's a lot of anger, anger out there at the moment. And we still currently, aren't we, still in lockdown and we still can't do this and we still can't do that. And I said it's not. It's a revolution that we're calling for of well-being. It's a revolution of happiness. It's a quiet revolution. It's not a placard pitchfork march to the council house demanding change revolution. It's a revolution that starts in your head and in your heart. And if you get it right, your best self, if you can learn to be your best self on a more regular basis, then my point in shine is it leaks out of you and it creates ripples of positivity in the people around you. So just three really simple things on the menu in the next few minutes, okay? So just bear with me. In a second, I'm gonna ask you a really, really big question, a question that I know I've asked before, but I'm gonna ask it again because it's changed my life. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna share with you the entire sort of summary version of my entire PhD that I did at Loughborough Uni. So it took me about 12 years to, to research well-being and happiness and it's plus it's an excuse for me to put that picture on because it's a, just a wonderful picture and then i'm going to talk about the ripple effect all right and that's really what my research has been about and the headline news the plot spoiler alert is this your happiness is bigger than you all right so just i'll save that i'll come back to it later so big question said so we start with a big question that's the question there that was rattling around in my head um in 2004 and I don't know what goes on in everybody else's head, but that was in my, could you be happier even if nothing in the world around you changed? And it's not a trick question, but if you just let it rattle around in your head a couple of times, could you be happier even if nothing in the world around you changed? My answer to me <laughs> in my little Derby head was yes. Right? Now that was a really interesting admission to myself because essentially what I was acknowledging and admitting to myself was I had the potential to be happier Right. So the world didn't need to change, but the world wasn't going to change. The world was going to continue to do what the world did. But within that, I had the potential to be happier. And yet I wasn't being. All right. So there's kind of an admission, really, that maybe the, the biggest single thing stopping me being happy was, in fact, myself. Now, so that was a bit of a wake up call. Now, I don't know. It might just be me. I might just be some sort of kind of weird person. So I happened to be doing a talk at a conference about three weeks later and I put that exact PowerPoint up to about 400 people. So I asked the audience, because I was curious, I said, by the way, ladies and gents, could you be happier even if nothing in the world around you changed? And I can remember that, that session to this day, out of those 400 people, about, I don't know, the vast majority, about 380 of them, kind of put their hands up, looking a bit puzzled, going, uh, yeah, probably, think we probably could be. And therefore, it was a realisation for me that it's part of the baked in human condition with us, with us, nearly everybody. We've all got this potential to flourish. We've got this potential to be happier. And, and the world doesn't need to change to facilitate that. What it does is it means that the biggest single thing stopping us being happy potentially is ourselves. So we're getting in our own way. Now that just made me curious as well. Well, how can I get out of my own way? How, what can I do personally to raise my happiness bar? And that sent me down this sort of rabbit warren of positive psychology and a, and a research uh, study at Loughborough Uni. So essentially, this is what I found. Um, part, the big part of my research was that I gave out lots of diaries in the workplace to working age people like myself. And I asked people to record how they feel during the working week. All right. So an emotional diary for, for them to have a, what, uh, to want to a better phrase. So. People logged how they feel and they hand their diaries back into me. And then I've got all this data and I would go back to Loughborough and I'd be able to code the emotions and essentially be able to plot people on a graph of happiness or a graph of well-being at work this week. And if I did that with everybody uh, watching this uh, video, then everybody would have a natural high point and a natural low point. Right. So we've all got this week, we've all got this upper level of positive. That's you at your emotional high point. That's you this week with a smile on your face. That's you with a spring in your step. That's you with with um, an energy and a passion and a positivity. It's you, in fact, you know what? I feel creative, I feel resilient. Bring me a problem there and it doesn't feel like a problem. So that's me and you at our emotional best where we feel like we can take almost anything the world throws at us, right? So that's you at your best. And equally, if you go through your diaries and you plotted all your emotions during the week and you hand your diaries back into me and we plot or everybody on a graph of well-being, everybody's also got the other end of the well-being spectrum. We've all got that lower level of 
Ooh, you know, when your shoulders have gone, you're quite lethargic in your body language. Ooh, lots of huffing and puffing and sighing and rolling your eyes. Your watch seems to have stopped. Your day's dragging. Ooh, if I can just survive today, maybe tomorrow will be better. There's no energy. There's no pizzazz. There's no spring in your set. There's no smile on your face. It's a bit of a grind. I describe those when you get up and go, got up and gone. So bring me a problem at the bottom end of the well-being spectrum. And it is a problem because I haven't got the sort of creativity and the energy to get through it. So all of us, ladies and gents, you already know this, don't you? We've all got a natural high point and a natural low point this week. Now, I am exaggerating to make a point, but if you then bring all that information together to try and kind of build up a picture of the population out there, then essentially what you'll find is that far too many people are spending far too much time in the bottom third of the diagram. So Britishness as a culture, as a way of thinking, as a way of talking, as a way of feeling, we're a little bit negative. We're quite downbeat. We're quite pessimistic as a nation. So the International League Tables of Happiness came out um, uh, last Friday and Finland's number one. I think Afghanistan's number 268. And we're, I think we're 17th or 18th or something. So we're, not, we're nowhere near the top. And we're okay. But what I'm basically saying is, looking at that diagram, what I'm saying is this. Most people are a million miles away from feeling as great as they could. Now... Let me just go out of my way just to because I know there's a lot of people struggling at the moment. I know we're in a pandemic. I understand that. And, and it's tough at the moment. But the red zone is not depression. OK, so depression is a clinical disorder that's below the bottom line. That's serious. That's medication. That's therapy. That's counseling. Right. That's what the system's there for to help you. But the red zone isn't that. So the red zone is well, I call it the curse of mediocrity. It's the slightly low level sort of grumbly ground down version of ourselves it's the monday morning version of ourselves now that's fine if you want to be like everybody else but in this new normal then i'm proposing this is where we position the city this is where we start individually so what i found when i plotted the data back in 2005 now so quite a long time ago is that not everybody's doing the same so there's a small percentage of the population that i nicknamed the two percenters and as you can see from the diagram they are living much closer towards that top end of their well-being spectrum, right? So these people are statistically significantly happier on a long-term basis. They've got bags more energy, right, which is really useful. They do stuff. They make things happen. They're great to have as parents and grandparents. They're great to have as work colleagues. Now, the thing is about psychology is we've <laughs> for 150 years since psychology has been around, psychology has never, ever studied people who are already happy, right? Because on the grounds of them not being ill. So essentially, what we've missed is this open goal psychologically. We've always looked at people below the line. I understand why, right? Because they need a bit of help and they need a bit of a leg up. I understand why we do that. But what I decided to do at Loughborough was flip psychology totally on its head and come at it from the other end of the telescope, really. Come at it from the 2% perspective. All of us watching this video, we can all think of in our life just a handful of people, <laughs> just a single handful of people in our life who we think might be 2 percenters. These handful of people who've got extra energy, extra positivity, extra resilience. In the workplace, they go the extra mile. And what I'm basically saying, for 150 years, we've ignored these people. So what I decided to do was give them a more embrace and find out three things. I spent a lot of time with two percenters finding out three things. First of all, who the heck are they, right? Who are these slightly odd people that have kind of got more happiness than everybody else? Secondly, what are they doing that allows them to feel so amazing? And thirdly, most importantly, is what can we then learn from them that we can put into practice in our lives? So the upward arrow on the screen, so that's there for the taking for all of us. And I think in terms of if we cut all the bull and the psychobabble, and if you're watching this in a school or a business or in your lounge or in your bedroom, it doesn't really matter where you're watching it, there are two truths, right? There are two truths around this. First truth, you've already worked it out, is this. The difference between you at the bottom of the arrow and the top of the arrow is a game changer. Right? It is a fundamental life changing position. So your next 50 years in 2% zone will be more rewarding and happier and more positive and more energetic and more flourishing for you at work and at home, at school, wherever than it will in the red zone. Right. You already know that. But here's the thing. Right. So as an academic, as somebody who's studied this for nearly 20 years now, here's the kicker. Right. Here's the really big deal. Being a 2 percenter by and large is a learned behavior, all right? Now that excites me, so let me say it again, it's a learned behavior. So I'm promising you that the two percenters aren't feeling amazing by accident. 
right? They're feeling amazing because they have strategies in place, right? Largely here, largely here in their thinking, they have strategies in place that enable them to have more good days and fewer bad ones. And if it's a learned behavior, right? then I, I would struggle to think of anything more important you will ever learn, right? And I'm saying that with dead, dead serious face on. I, I can't think of anything more important you will ever learn. So with that in mind, what Brilliant Derby is about is about a citywide, you see where we're going with this, right? A citywide project into the 2% zone. Now, I'm just going to give you a cursory, a cursory look at this because I used to, I spent a lot of time in the mood weaver zone, right? So I spent 40 years doing what everybody else did, right? And I wasn't sad and I wasn't depressed. I was perfectly okay, but I was a bit more alive on a Friday night than I was on a Monday morning. So my mood was dictated by the weather or what day of the week it was, it was kind of random really. And mood hoovers, they're not horrible, they're not sad and not depressed, right? Mood hoovers are just people who just get a little bit stuck in being negative about, well, about everything really. Yeah, so now, and I, I love Derby. I'm a very proud Derby lad, right? And I'm a big Derby County supporter and it, it's hard for me not to be a mood over on a Saturday at five o'clock at the moment, <laughs> right? Because it's, oh my gosh, not again. Um, but mood hoovers, I call them mood hoovers because they uh, they just kind of suck all the happiness out of you, yeah? They, they, you can feel, you know, real mood hoovers, like, oh, it's hard work basically, isn't it? Now, I have this feeling sometimes that if I stop a hundred people in Derby Marketplace on a wet Monday and I ask how are you a hundred people have learned to say well I'm not too bad considering <laughs> all right I'm fair to middling mid duck or I'll be all right at five o'clock now I know that's not sad and that's not a depression but I think we can do better that's basically it I think we can do better all right so my challenge is not just to raise yourself into two percent mode right my challenge is that this is contagious in a good way so you in two percent mode it's what you need it's what your family needs it's what your workplace needs it's what the city needs and bigger than that maybe it's what the world needs so the questions are how right so obviously brilliant derby is about sharing some of that now i'm not going to i'm not going to sort of go into great detail but there's just a couple of questions before i do the ripple effect a couple of questions that i just want to kind of go through so first of all if you were to think after this video right if you write down who your two percenters are and how do you know the how do you know bit is really important right so i don't want you to write down celebrities off the tv but you'll have this handful of people in your life who you think are kind of two percenters and the reason how you know, the reason why their names will be on your list is because when they're in the room, you feel great as well. So I'm coming back to this contagion, this ripple effect of a two percenter in your life makes you feel good too. This, I just think that's a fantastic concept, right? So I'm asking you to step up into two percent mode, right? Now, the, the, an equally important question is, well, why are there so many negative people? Why are there so many people who are a little bit stuck in being grumbly about everything? Is it the pandemic? Well, it doesn't help, does it, when there's a pandemic? Is it, is it the news? Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe. Potentially it's the news. Maybe it's uh, the weather. Maybe it's the traffic. Maybe it's the football. You know what I'm saying at the moment. But the truth of it is, they're all issues. Right? They're all minor issues in comparison with the truth. <laughs> and the truth, again, I don't want to be too hard-hitting, but why are there so many negative people? The absolute truth is because it's easier to be a negative person, all right? So it doesn't take any effort to look around and conform to what we see around us. And if everybody else is grumbling about the weather and lockdown and the football, blah, 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 then and as a human being, we've got this kind of baked in desire to fit into what is culturally and societally normal. So if everybody else is having a grumble, then we, we want to fit in. So we accidentally join in with that and it's effortless <laughs> to be yourself averagely. It takes no effort to look at what everybody else is doing and do that. And therefore, the reverse is true. And is that it, once again, it's, there's effort involved because to be your best self, which is essentially what a two percenter is, it's you at your best. To be your best self on a more consistent basis, to be a confident, passionate, hopeful, optimistic human being, it's a bit harder, right? Remember, it's learned. You've got to learn it. You've got to stick at it until it changes. You see, it becomes baked in. And most people. Either don't know how to do it or they can't be bothered to do it for long enough for it to stick. Whew. Brilliant Derby is about getting bothered. 
All right, that's basically what it is, it's about getting bothered. So we said, oh, that's your big question, you know, and then we said we talk about um, uh, the science of happiness. And I said, uh, the third thing I want to cover is the ripple effect. Now, once again, this is relates to my re PhD, really. So the idea came from, the idea for Brilliant Derby came from uh, six months ago, I think. I can't remember where it came from, but you know, wouldn't it be great if we could get this going across the town? So Brilliant Derby was born. The question is why, and the why for me is this, is this ripple effect. So I've already alluded about three times to the fact that your happiness is contagious, right? Now, there's, there's not a massive amount of research about this, and this isn't from my PhD. I've borrowed this from, um, uh, from some American research, but I really like it in terms of trying to set the scene and what Brilliant Derby ultimately is all about, and it's this. So your happiness leaks out of you, and it reaches three degrees of people removed from you, all right? So now the numbers are a little bit little on that. I think the numbers potentially are bigger than this, but in terms of giving you what we can prove rather than trying to sort of make things up, here's, here, here is how it goes. So if you're having a great day, if you're a two percenter, if you're on top form, you with a smile on your face, you with a spring in your step, if you're having a genuinely great day, everybody that you come into contact with during that day will be a minimum of 16% happier because you're in their life, all right? So let's assume, let's assume that it starts with me in the morning at 7 a.m. I've got a smile on my face, all right? So because I'm in a good place, let's assume then my kids come down for breakfast. So because dad's in a good place, it, then my kids will catch my happiness by a minimum of 16%. So if I'm smiling while I'm making the breakfast, we're having a bit of banter. So I'm feeling great. My children are now 16% happier because dad's happy, all right? So then I'll drive off to work. My kids will go and stand at the bus stop in Derby waiting for the school bus. School bus turns up, right? <laughs> my kids are 16% happier. So when they get on the bus, they might... They might just smile at the bus driver and say, hi, sir, hi, miss, how are you? Bus driver is now 10% happier. <laughs> so I've not met the bus driver, right? But they've caught, that's my happiness that's been contagion. So my kids have caught it, now the bus driver's got it. Bus driver drives to, to, to school thinking, do you know what, I think the Daily Mail is incorrect. Teenagers seem very happy and smiley nowadays. Bus driver's 10% happier. Bus driver drops the kids off at school, goes back to the depot and ask at drive, and has a cup of tea with the other bus drivers, the other bus drivers are now 6% happier, <laughs> right? I've not met the bus driver and I've not been to their, their cup of tea meeting either. But that is an example of a single individual at 7 a.m. deciding to have a great attitude. And the lead, that's one person, that's me in the morning creating this ripple. <sighs> Imagine the contagion if this got a real foothold in the city, all right? I'm imagining, I'm imagining. So go with the imagination. Just, just go with me. And I've written, I've written some places down, right? So I did a shout out. I said, "Hey, up me duck," didn't I? And I mentioned Alverston, Littlever, Micklever, Macuff, Normo, Allenton, Cello, Spondon, Sinfin, Petrie, Alistair, Darley Abbey, Chad, Chester Green, the kind of city centre suburbs, right? Right. Imagine if they all sort of cottoned on to the two percent. Let's imagine the contagion, right? So if they all got it, what if it started leaking out outside of the city? So Melbourne, Belper, Duffield, Chesterfield, Ashbourne, Swad, Matlock, Glossop, Ilkeston, Ripley, Dronfield, Buxton, Bolsover, Bakewell, Amber Valley, Erewash. They all started to feel a bit happier as well. And then if you look at the look at the picture, that's a map of England with all the counties. Look where Derbyshire is, right? Look where Derbyshire is. And look, at, is that not where the heart is? <laughs> is that not centrally in the middle are we not in the heart of england so if we got it right will we not pump this out across the rest of the country are we not is derbyshire and derby not in the middle of the country for a reason is what i'm thinking all right this is why i'm excited to be part of brilliant derby what if we collectively had enough people who were prepared to get bothered enough to flip into two percent mode more often what if we therefore became the happiest, the healthiest, the best city to live in, the best place to work? What if we become the best place to get educated, the best place to raise your family? What if in two years or five years or 10 years or 20 years, when they do a measure of happiness across the UK, they find that Derby was the happiest and they find that we started the revolution? That's why I'm excited about it. The heartbeat, right? Vive la revolution. Now the revolution, remember the ripple and being a two percenter doesn't, have, you don't have to wait
for everybody else to change. All right, being a two percenter isn't about anybody else really. It's about getting ourselves in tip top form, getting ourselves mentally and physically sorted out. So we become a role model other people can't help but feel amazing when we're around. When we're around. So that new normal, I mean, that's a bizarre picture. But what I'm suggesting is what if the new normal was where we all took responsibility for being our best possible selves? Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that, Sanj. We'll have a little chat. But I think the responsibility starts with everybody watching this. And I'm hoping this is beamed into assemblies in schools. And schools can start getting involved with the Brilliant Derby Challenge. Wow, that 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 is a uh, give me a bit of oomph on the uh, on a fantastic magical Monday. Thanks, Andy. That is that is life changing stuff, isn't it? That's life changing stuff, right? Like you said, you know, from the bottom arrow, bottom part of the arrow to the top part of the arrow. That is it. That is it. It's not about the external circumstance. It's not about the car. It's not about the job. It's not about family size. It's not about the weather. It's not about what day of the week it is, and all these things that we tell ourselves and also get taught. It's um, it's all about what goes on inside your head. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for giving all of Derby a shout out there, which is fantastic. And it, and it seems, or maybe maybe I'm going a bit bit uh, off piece here, but Derby is strategically placed, isn't it? Strategically it's placed for this. We are the heartbeat, Sands. There's a reason we're in the middle. There's a reason I put that in red as well, yeah? Because well, honestly, if we can pump out some good stuff, it's not just the families in our communities, but it leaks out into Derbyshire and it leaks out into the UK. Uh, honestly, I'm really excited about being part of a revolution. And the revolution mm. starts with us individually, <laughs> doesn't it? We know, I always say that, yeah, kind of if I do training in the, or keynote speak, I, I talk about we've got a weight problem, right? And I don't, I mean, mm. W-A-I-T problem. Right, that so we're waiting for somebody else, or we're waiting for the perfect day, or we're waiting for the perfect opportunity, or we're waiting for the pandemic to go away, or we're waiting for the weekend. All right, and my my rallying call for the people of Derby is to quit waiting. All right, happiness has to start with us. It has to start with today. And and, and what brilliant Derby is going to do going forward is lots of top tips on how to be happy. So I know that you, in the next couple of weeks, you've got people lined up, haven't you, who, who you're going to be asking them, OK, give us some top tips from real people about how do you stay positive in a world that's trying to beat it out of you? That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And before before we let you go this afternoon, I just want to ask you one more thing. For I, I know you've given a lot in terms of, you know, the PhD, the ripple effect. It's all, you know, it's all magical stuff and, and you, you know, call to action for the schools of Derby to get involved with this. But what would you like to see, you know, for example, for the schools to get involved in this? Give me something practical. If, you, if, if a school is watching this now, if it's a teacher or is beamed in an assembly, give me something that a child or a classroom can do with what today and just take it by storm. Give me an example, okay. please. I would rather, I would rather, Sans, just keep that under a hat a little bit and I'm going to maybe come back in a couple of weeks and set the schools yeah. an actual challenge. All right, and I'm going to try and get this ripple to be a tsunami. I think the best way of doing that is to get businesses and to get communities and to get schools really involved in a major project that gets everybody talking. So we're hatching a plan behind the scenes. So I kind of just keep it under my hat for now. But um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, mate, there might be a random acts of kindness day lined up where we can set a new world record. But you've heard, I'm not really saying that yet. So can't promise it, but... Let's make that happen. There we go. There we go. People of Derby, that is it from the Dr. Andy himself. Just want to say, Andy Cave, thank you so much. That is a, it's always a pleasure to see you do this. And, and I know everybody who's watched this whole video will be feeling good about themselves. And it's about this feeling that you've got right now. Yeah. This is the time, you know. There's no, there's no tomorrow. There's no next week. There's not next year. There's not after lockdown and all this kind of stuff. This feeling that you've got right now, close your eyes, remember how it feels, and go and do something fantastic with it. So, Dr. Andy Cope, thank you so much. We'll see you again very soon. And for those watching and, and tuned into Brilliant Derby, we've got exciting things planned for you in terms of real Derby people. Again, we're going deeper into the names which Andy mentioned, which I definitely can't remember as a boy from Swansea. But we've got places, people from other places in Derby getting involved very soon. So drop us an email there at yes at brilliantderby.org. And we would love to get you involved either in front of the camera or behind the camera. But until next time, Dr. Andy Cape, thank you so much. And we will see you soon. Cheers, Andrew. Take care.